Hello everyone, welcome to another episode on our channel, ADHD Focus and Motivation. Today we're delving deep into a powerful theme that touches us all but holds particular significance within the neurodivergent community. Embracing failure as a path to progress and success. Whether you're a parent of a neurodivergent child or an adult navigating life's complexities, this exploration into the nature of failure will equip you with strategies to turn setbacks into stepping stones toward success. In our culture, failure is often seen as a final, negative outcome, a stigma that can lead to avoiding challenging pursuits altogether. Let's challenge this view and redefine failure as an essential component of learning and growth. Scientifically, when we fail, our brain is activated in areas that oversee problem-solving and critical thinking, undergoing what neuroscientists call synaptic pruning. This process involves the brain refining itself, making stronger connections while letting go of the less useful ones. To help your neurodivergent child understand this, use analogies they can relate to. For instance, compare the brain to a garden that needs weeding to allow new flowers to bloom. Discuss how every attempt, successful or not, nurtures the brain's landscape, making it more fertile for future endeavors. The concept of a growth mindset, developed by psychologist Carol Dweck, revolutionizes how we think about learning and intelligence. At its core, a growth mindset is the belief that one's abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication, hard work, and input from others. This contrasts sharply with a fixed mindset, where abilities are seen as static and unchangeable. Individuals with a growth mindset view challenges as opportunities to grow and learn. They are more likely to persevere through difficulties, viewing failure not as a reflection of their intelligence or talent, but as a natural part of the learning process. This mindset encourages a focus on improvement rather than on proving oneself. For instance, a student with a growth mindset who struggles in mathematics would not say, I'm bad at math, but rather, I need to develop my skills in math through more practice and study. The implications of adopting a growth mindset are profound, especially in educational settings. Educators who cultivate a growth mindset in their classrooms encourage students to take on challenges, persist in the face of setbacks, and view effort as a path to mastery. They praise the process and effort, not just the outcome, which builds resilience and a lifelong love of learning. Such an environment not only supports academic achievement, but also prepares students to handle future obstacles in all areas of life with determination and confidence. Parents can foster a growth mindset in children by focusing on effort over achievement. For example, instead of saying, I'm proud you got an A, say, I'm proud of how hard you studied for your test. For adults, reflect on your own responses to setbacks. When you encounter failure, ask yourself, what did this experience teach me? Instead of ruminating on the disappointment. Turning to practical strategies, let's start with parents. When your child faces failure, frame it as a normal part of learning. Create a failure is progress chart where each setback is followed by brainstorming potential solutions. This visual aid can help children see their progress and encourage them to think creatively about overcoming obstacles. For adults, especially those without children, effective strategies include setting realistic goals and embracing flexibility. Consider using a journal to record and reflect on each failure. Write down what happened, how it made you feel, what was learned, and how future attempts could be improved. This practice not only aids in emotional processing, but also in strategizing future efforts. Let's look at some inspiring figures. Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. His perseverance through countless failures before inventing the light bulb is a testament to the power of resilience. Similarly, J.K. Rowling faced numerous rejections before Harry Potter was finally accepted. Her story is especially relatable for neurodivergent individuals. J.K. Rowling's path to publishing Harry Potter is a classic example of perseverance in the face of rejection and a testament to the power of not giving up on one's dreams. Before Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone became a global phenomenon, igniting one of the most successful literary franchises in history, it faced numerous setbacks. Rowling, a then-struggling single mother, faced the daunting task of sending her manuscript to multiple publishers, only to be met with rejection after rejection. The manuscript was turned down by no fewer than 12 publishing houses. Each rejection could have been a reason for Rowling to doubt her abilities and give up on her story. But she didn't. Instead, she persisted, believing in the world she had created. 
Her perseverance finally paid off when Bloomsbury, a small British publishing house, gave Harry Potter a chance after the CEO's eight-year-old daughter read the first chapter and immediately demanded the rest. This breakthrough is a compelling reminder that success often comes after numerous failures and that the determination to continue despite obstacles can lead to unprecedented success. Rowling's journey with Harry Potter underscores the importance of resilience and confidence in one's creative vision, especially in the face of skepticism and rejection. Sharing such stories can be incredibly motivating. Consider creating a wall of resilience at home or in the classroom where you and your child can post stories of people who turned failures into successes. This can serve as a daily reminder that failure is often the precursor to success. Neurodivergent learners often benefit from specific strategies that accommodate their learning styles. For instance, breaking tasks into smaller, more manageable steps can prevent feelings of overwhelm and help maintain focus. Visual aids like flowcharts or diagrams can also be extremely helpful in guiding them through complex tasks or projects. Parents and teachers can create task breakdown charts that outline each step needed to complete a task, along with estimated timeframes and required resources. This method not only clarifies the task, but also instills a sense of accomplishment as each step is completed. Lastly, the environment around us plays a crucial role in how we perceive and react to failure. For both children and adults, having a supportive network, whether family, friends, or professional help, can make a significant difference. This support system should encourage open discussions about failures and successes alike, fostering an atmosphere where setbacks are not feared but seen as natural steps in the learning process. In conclusion, embracing failure as a natural and beneficial par of the learning journey can dramatically change how we approach challenges and setbacks. Remember, each failure sheds light on areas that need improvement and ultimately paves the way for success. Keep pushing forward, keep learning, and turn each setback into a stepping stone towards achieving your goals. Thank you for joining us today on ADHD Focus and Motivation. If this video has inspired you, please like, subscribe, and share it with others who might benefit. Stay motivated and stay well.